JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for October the 6th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we'll jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded higher against uh, most of the other uh, major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained the most versus JPY, CHF, and then ZD, while it underperformed slightly, only against GBP and the Canadian dollar. The weakening of the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc suggests that market sentiment may have improved somehow yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the risk-linked Kiwi points otherwise. Therefore, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that major EU and US indices were a sea of green, rising on average 1.3% each. However, the optimism disappeared during the Asian session. Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and South Korea's KOSPI all traded in negative waters. Now, European and uh, US indices were driven higher by a rebound in uh, beaten down technology companies, perhaps as some market participants saw Monday's sell off as an opportunity to buy the dip. That said, in our view, this is far from a positive reversal, especially in growth stocks, as concerns over persistently high inflation and central bank tightening remain elevated, and in our view this is evident by the strength in the US dollar as well as the pullback in equities during the, the Asian session today. But what triggered that response? Uh, what was the event that uh, brought forth uh, uh, that, brought, uh, that uh, brought inflation and central bank tightening concerns back to surface? We believe that it may have been the RBNZ and we will explain why just um, just now. The bank raised interest rates by 25 basis points as was widely expected and while some may have been anticipating a slightly more cautious language in the accompanying statement, uh, officials appeared uh, rather optimistic, noting uh, that further removal of monetary policy stimulus is expected over time and that economic activity will recover quickly as alert level restrictions ease. The fact that uh, policymakers confidently signaled uh, more hikes in the foreseeable future encouraged some uh, Kiwi buying. However, the currency was quick to reverse uh, the gains and trade even lower. Without anything uh, of dovish nature in the RBNZ statement, we believe that the bank's language may have raised concerns that other major central banks may also dismiss as temporary the latest economic slowdown and proceed with faster tightening. What's more, the latest central bank commentary suggests that officials are now more concerned over high inflation. Remember that, among others, Fed Chair Powell recently said that inflation uh, remains elevated uh, for longer than they have previously estimated. So, as a link. Uh, excuse me. So, as a, a risk-linked uh, currency, uh, that's why Kiwi may have quickly reversed south, and that's perhaps why equities uh, fell today. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, today we have uh, Eurozone's retail sales for August and the US ADP report for September. Eurozone's retail sales are expected to have rebounded 0.8% month over month after sliding 2.3%. While in the US, the ADP report is expected to show that the private sector has gained 430,000 jobs, less than August's 374,000. Although the ADP is far from a reliable predictor of the NFPs, this is the only major gauge we have for the official statistic, and thus it could raise some speculation that the NFPs uh, could also come, come in uh, slightly better than uh, in August. 
With regards to the energy market, the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week is coming out and expectations are for a 0.418 million barrels slide after a 4.578 million um, barrels increase the week before. However, bearing in mind that uh, yesterday the American Petroleum Institute reported a 0.951 million inventory built, we would consider the risks surrounding the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted uh, to the upside. Now on the political front, the US Senate uh, will vote on a plan proposed by Democrats, uh, by Democrats to suspend the US debt ceiling, according uh, to yesterday's remarks by a key lawmaker. As for the speakers, we will get to hear from Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic and ECB Supervisory Board Member Elizabeth McCall. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the, de in the description below. So goodbye. Have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.